get your mind to think outside the box when people you hear stuff on the news when these elected officials these community leaders get up before you use your mind and think people that's what I'm trying to make you do let me give you another example the news media reported the results of a survey a study that says crime among youth was up and this study suggested that the curfew would be changed for our youth to reduce crime. This was a study. Consequently, the mayor, the mayor took the results of that survey, went before the city council and passed a law to change the curfew on our youth, to make them have to be in the house earlier. The curfew, a citywide curfew and pros on youth as a result of a study. Now there's two points that you got that, that has to be, you have to comprehend in this people. You gotta comprehend what the coach is trying to tell you. Number one, a curf the, the mayor changed the curfew all over the city, put a law on the book, went before your 50 aldermen and got a law passed to change the curfew to an earlier time as a result of this study that was presented and the news people covered it. And he changed and said, well, we want the kids in and off the streets earlier to reduce crime. Well, see, again, I keep telling you, I'm trying to educate your minds, people, because those that are in power, they get in front of the TV and they play PR games, public relation games with you, image games with you by using news media. The fact of the matter is their own studies, their own surveys tell them that between 3 and 6 p.m. in the evening, most of your crime take place in the inner city communities between 3 and 6 p.m. Now, if you're going to change your curfew from 11 o'clock to 10.30 or from 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock, whatever it was, it was an hour to hour earlier, a half an hour earlier that the kids had to be in the house. Mr. Mayor, Mr. 50 Alderman, and Mr. People that did this survey and released it to the news media, Crime take place between 3 and 6 p.m., not late at night when they want you to think crime take place among teenagers. Now, if you would, would want to do something to change that situation, what you do is you take those Chicago public schools that close at 3 o'clock in the, in the evening, 2.45, 2.30, depending on what time kids get out of school. What you do is you take those, those Chicago public schools and you keep the doors open to 7 o'clock in the evening with after-school programs. Mr. President of the Board of Education, this is what you do if you want to create some social and economic change in the community. If you want to create change in terms of our young black men and women and Hispanic brothers and sisters and our white brothers and sisters from going to jail for illegal activities, crime, gang activities, you create after-school programs by opening up our tax paid schools, which we pay taxes on that, fund these schools. You open these buildings up and you put out the school program. And before you tell me we would love to do those things, but we don't have the funding. We need more money. So you need to lobby more money. Well, those of you that would say that, let, the coach got a solution for you. Coach got a simple solution. You have a one point two billion dollar public safety budget for the city of Chicago that the 50 aldermen pass every year. If you divert some of that 1.2 billion dollars for public safety, police fire, that you're using to put more police officers on the street to lock our kids up. If you divert some of that $1.2 billion from public safety and put it into prevention safety and use it as after-school funding for youth programs, you would have something going on between 3 and 6 p.m. in our inner city communities to keep our kids busy. You would have after-school programs of recreation. And if you take that $1 billion budget, that the county board pass every year for public safety. One billion dollars the county pass for public safety. 
and you invest some of those one billion dollars into at the school programs for our kids by aiding and assisting the 1.2 billion dollars that the city has then you would create some viable programs that would reduce the the, 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 the incarceration rate of our black men and our black women at 80 percent in this state. That's what you would do and then the state has a 59 billion dollar budget. If you would divert some of those dollars that the state spends for public safety into after school programs because after all the funding for the school principally comes from the state and when it's all said and done it all comes from the taxpayers dollars. So if you want to stop crime, if you want to reduce crime in our inner city communities, you don't need to be putting a curfew on the books to penalize when kids can and cannot be out on the streets. What you need to do is you need to put viable programs into the community, Mr. Mayor, Mr. County Board President, Mr. Governor, Mr. Aldermans, Mr. County Board Commissioners and Ms. County Board Commissioners, state representatives and state senators, what you need to do is you need to re-divert our tax dollars into our communities. And you need to create after-school programs for our babies so they'll have something to do. And then you won't have to have preachers getting on the bus looking like a joke, singing Zion songs when another kid get killed in the public schools and talking about what we're going to do to change this atmosphere. What you do is you put programs in the community. What you do, Mr. Mayor, you put city-funded programs into our, in our schools in the forms of after-school programs. What you do is you take our tax dollars that's being wasted all over this city by patronists, TIF dollars given to the rich. You take some of that one, that, that billion dollars that you're going to raise to build Olympics and the countless millions of dollars that's being spent just to try to lobby to get this Olympus team to Chicago. You take some of those dollars and you put them in after school programs. You put them in crime prevention programs. You invest them in the local little leagues in the community. You invest, invest them into the, 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 the football programs and girls softball leagues and you invest them into good facilities in our city. And then you will start to see some change among our youth. That's what you do if you want to bring social and economic change to our inner city community. That's what you do if you want to stop black on black crime, Latino on Latino crime. If you want to stop it, you put dollars into it. But you know what they don't? They're not concerned about stopping it. They're not concerned because it's not an interest. It's not a priority. But what they have to do is they have to get on TV. And they have to use the news media as their propaganda agent to give the appearance that we're concerned to give the appearance that we care about the social and economic conditions of the inner city community, the inner city poor communities. And you gotta understand, when I talk about the inner city community, when I talk about the poor communities, I'm, I, I'm advocating for the common people that don't have, that's in need. Because you know there are two class of people in this city, in this state and in this county. They are the haves and the have nots. And to the haves, they really not, what I'm saying really, that it goes over their head because they're not concerned. They, they, they have wealth. They have money. They live comfortable. They got nice bank accounts. So when I get on TV and talk about the social and economic condition, this is over their head. What is he talking about? Why is he on here talking all of this stuff? That's nonsense. That's hobbish. That's garbage. That's bull. This is what they say, because they're economically stable. So they're not facing living from paycheck to paycheck. They're not in food lines. They're not out homeless. So they really don't relate. They just sit back with their money, their wealth, their nice homes, their nice cars, and their comfortable lifestyle, and they just take the position, those people are in the position that they're in because they choose to be in that position. They choose to be poor. They choose to live in poverty. They choose to sell drugs. So why should I, who have worked hard for my education, I've raised my kids and I've done good 
by my kids? Why should I be concerned about those people 